Once upon a time, I watched Naruto, and ever since, I fell in love with anime. As I was growing up, I eventually started to ask myself how hard it is to make an animation such as this. So I decided to give myself seven days and see what I can come up with. Starting with day number one. This one is all about learning, experimenting, and practicing the craft of animation. The biggest headache by far was learning the entire layout of the animation feature in Clip Studio Paint, but thankfully, after a few minutes, I got the hang of it and could finally start drawing. I'm the type of guy I learn better through trial and error, because all these step-by-step -step guides only confuse me and lead to me overthinking everything and not progressing at all. Since I only have seven days, or technically speaking six days, I want to prioritize simple movements. In my first practice, I want to try to capture a head as it turns to the right side. As you can see, I like to use myself as a reference, like in all of my videos, but here I want to make it more of a guide to help me with the poses. Very quickly into the first drawing, I realized I ended up losing myself and fixing everything and overcomplicating the entire process. So I tried to be a bit more loose on the second drawing. And despite this being a lengthy process, I'm enjoying this so much, because for once, it doesn't have to be super polished or look insane to convey exactly what it has to, which is movement. Also, my tolerance to long working hours definitely increased after the manga video. I still got PTSD. And I have to say, I had so much fun doing this. Of course, it looks wonky here and there, but I learned a lot from doing just this. It's currently 7.30 p.m., so still a little bit time left, and I will use that to practice a little bit more. Hand movements will be essential in my project, so I did a few of those, and tried myself on the upper body as well. Those were definitely easier than the face, since there isn't 50 things you have to pay attention to proportional-wise. I wish I could have done another practice for hair as well, but that unfortunately just takes too much time, and to put it quite frank, I'm tired. <laughs> The intro of the animation will probably start with a short full body sequence where the character is laying on the ground while everything is shot from above. My plan is to zoom into the face of the character, the eye specifically, and whether I will do this in one fluent motion or a simple jump cut, I will decide as soon as I design the first shot. Though to avoid any troubles later, I will take my time with this because I'm the type of person I, I like to change up things as I go and I think I'll just end up in chaos if I'll do that. Okay, we got the first frame out of... <laughs> Like 80? Anyways, the next segment of this animation will be the zoom. I'm not familiar how keyframes work in Clip Studio Paint, so I'll have to figure that out as well. But basically, as the camera moves into the character, I don't want it to be a simple stale scene, so there will be wind blowing the hair and the clothes to the side. And I will basically work on that like all night. Alright, despite yesterday being one big pain in the a because somehow the entire world needed my help, I still managed to put together 12 frames. Today will probably be one of the harder days because I have to figure out how to exactly work with the keyframes. Though luckily, thanks to this guy, it took me exactly 5 minutes to learn the exact camera movement that I needed to make this animation work. I added a few more frames and decided to connect the next scene through a jump cut. Basically the way I planned it in my head is the camera zooms into him, he blinks and exactly the moment he closes his eye, there will be a cut. From there, I will continue, finally with details, and make him slowly open his eye, which then is our gateway to the next scene. In day 4 and 5, we enter the second phase of the animation, the more artistic and expressive part that will need a lot more work than what I did so far. So it's time to grab my phone once again and take a bunch of reference pictures. The way I want to design the small scene is that the character at first looks a bit sketchy, but the more time passes, the cleaner the lines become, which in the end all falls apart again and turns into chaos. I definitely felt the workload of the past three days slowing me down because I was basically working all day long while also having a part-time job. Though regardless, I love where this is going and hopefully by day six we can move closer to the finish line. There are approximately 25 to 30 different frames that I have to animate in two days. So yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Listening to this berserk soundtrack while paying absolutely no mind to anything and drawing one crazy line after the other felt really expressive. <laughs> now despite it looking very wonky, partially because I felt so sluggish over the past two days, I still love how it turned out. Honestly, this way it's probably a lot better than when it's like super neat because there's a big difference between controlled chaos and uncontrolled chaos. While the other one is chaotic, but you're still able to clearly read what's on the paper, the other one is kind of, you have no idea what's going on. You'll notice that towards the end I started using a lot thicker lines 
and trying to put as much black and emphasizing movement as possible while still kind of keeping the image of a face. And because of all that, the character loses his human touch and becomes this monstrosity, which is exactly what I want to convey in this scene. Now it's time for the last phase and therefore the end of this animation. Since the beginning was kind of a fast paced intro, transitioning into this emotional climax, we now need something to calm down from all this. Which is why I want to do some stale images and kind of let those few seconds from before sink in. Yeah? Hey yo, I got the... Are you working right now? What a stupid question. What, what's up? Hey, wh why, why, why you got a bandage? I'm glad you don't remember. You gave me a concussion with that slipper you threw at me last time. Oh. Well, did it help? Whatever, listen. I know you're working right now and you kind of been working all week, okay? Okay? And? I know you love working. I know you do, but, but please hear me out. Jimmy, you better not tell me what I think you're about to tell me. Why don't you just take a day off? What the f Calm down, man. Look, we've been fighting ever since I can remember. And I thought just this once, why don't you and me just hang out, you know? I got these two tickets for Doom Part 2 and I know you love the first movie so much. Yeah, I did. Indeed. Right, and I checked out some of the reviews for Part 2 and I know it's just been out for a few days. But unlike the first one, people are saying it's heat! Brother, I'm not gonna lie, that sounds tempting, but who's gonna go over the animation? The neighbor? Come on, man. We already finished. Nobody's gonna care whether we put an extra line or two. Jimmy, you mother... Listen, we are gonna go to that movie, okay? But you are not putting my hopes up because you know what expectations lead to? Disappointment. And I'm not taking any chances because I really like that first movie. Alright, chill. It's a deal then. Come on, let's go. The train leaves in one hour. But right now, Jimmy, hold on. Let me do like one more line, okay? Jimmy, no, what are you doing? One more line, please. Up. I don't know what kind of reviews you were reading, but that was a 10 out of 10 disappointment. Come on, it wasn't that bad. Jimmy, right now I want to give you another concussion. You know what? I've had enough of this b Roll the animation, I'm out of here. Well, you know the drill. Truly thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. I don't want to go to this movie. We're going to this movie.